Are you ready? Hey, you think you can tell us what to do? You think you can tell us what to wear? You think that you're better? Well, you better get ready. Bow to the masters. Break it down! Hey guys, it's your man FK here, and uh, I wanted to do I wanted to do a reaction video, response video, uh, from my experience at Hell in Cell. Um, I'm not gonna do um, I'm not gonna do a a review of the pay per view or the grading of the pay per view, talking about what I thought of the matches and the storylines. I just want to do uh, I just want to talk about my experience going to Hell in a Cell, talk about what I saw there, what I didn't see. Maybe some of the differences between what I saw, what you guys saw on TV. What I liked about it, what I didn't like, what I was perplexed about. So, um, that's what this is going to be. So, um, we left Sunday. We left Sunday. It's only about a two and a half hour drive from our house, which isn't bad. So, we got there. We got into Miami about two o'clock. We got in a really nice hotel, um, stayed at a Marriott, um, <clears throat> it was, uh, eight blocks, it was actually eight, the, the arena was eight blocks north of, of the hotel, really close, you could walk there, we didn't, we drove, it was like a two minute drive, um, but a really posh hotel, we were on the 25th floor of this giant skyscraper, and there was a pool on the roof, and kind of a hotel that Kevin Bacon would stay at, or maybe Mr. Potato. Anyway, so um, we got there. The event didn't start till 7.30, and they opened the doors at an hour before. So we tooled around Miami for a little bit, and we, we took a nap and went swimming. That That's tooling around Miami. Uh, we got to the arena about 6.30. Really easy to get to the arena, really easy to get in. The parking wasn't, wasn't too bad. They had it's cool because I'm not used to going to events where there's actual like traffic direction. So there were a lot of uh, there were a lot of cops directing traffic, which I thought was nice. We got, we got into the arena easy. We found a spot easy. 6:30, we got there. We lined up. We lined up outside the doors. There was multiple doors around the place. So we we we, we lined up. Um, they weren't they didn't let anybody in until like quarter of quarter of seven. So we, you know, we went in line for like 15 minutes. It wasn't bad. We got to see, you know, there's a lot of kids out there. That they're milling about, a lot of kids, a lot of older folks, you know. Everybody's with their t-shirts and their posters and people are chanting and whatnot. So, uh, you know, it was cool. You, you, you get to talk to people in line. Um, talk about, you know, the pay-per-view and their wrestling. Wrestlers and all that, so we jibber jabbered with a couple up in front of us for a little bit. A quarter of seven, we get in, and the line went. Once they opened the doors, the line went really quick. Um, we went through. They had to, you know, they do the bag checks and everything, and they had to check my posters. I had to unroll all of the posters and show it to them. I wanted to make sure that that there wasn't obscenities on it. The arena has a no obscenity on their poster rule apparently, so. I want to make sure I didn't have a sign that said fuck Cena or something like that. So that's fine. So we went in, <clears throat> took the elevator up to the third floor. We were, in the three, we were in the 300 section, section 310. So um, we got in, and there's merch booths on every floor, uh, food on every floor and whatnot. <clears throat> so we got in, and I was hungry, as I always am. So first thing we did, or I did, I went to get food, and my wife and my daughter went to the merch booth to see what they had. So I went and got food, and spent nine bucks on a mini pizza, seven bucks on a hot dog, eight dollars on a tub of soda, ten dollars for a bottle of water. These prices are outrageous. I mean, you expect it. You know this is going to happen. But really, eight dollars for a hot dog? A hot dog that's been sitting under a warmer? 
That's a 25 cent hot dog. That's a nickel bun. I mean, you know, whatever. I'm not going to complain about it because I expect that. And I was starving. When I get that hungry, hell, you know, whatever. I'll shell out 20 bucks for a french fry. I don't care. So um, Disney's the same way. They, they, they know they have you. I, I don't even know. It's a good thing I don't drink. I don't drink, so I don't know what they spend on beer and booze. I'm, I'm assuming the beer and the booze isn't cheap. So we get the food. I eat my, my, my $9 mini pizza. And we go to the merch booth. And the merch booth, that's my first disappointment of the night. Merch booth was pitiful. I haven't seen a merchandise booth with that little merchandise. They didn't send the arena a lot of merchandise. They only had they only they only had merchandise for John Cena, Randy Orton, Daniel Bryan, and CM Punk. That's it. They had T-shirts and hats for those four wrestlers. That's it. They had T-shirts for Bryan, T-shirts for Punk, T-shirts for uh, um, Cena, and T-shirts for Orton. They had a program. They had the "You Can't See Me" foam finger. They had a ten dollar. They had a $10, this lights up, by the way. This is a foam, you can't see me thing. It lights up. Is it? Oh, here's a button. You probably can't see that because I got lights on. But it lights up and you wave it. You can't see me. This was $10. Whatever. So, um, but they didn't have anything. You know, my daughter wanted to get an AJ Lee shirt. They didn't send any Divas merchandise. Anything. Nothing. Nothing at all. Um, they, they, they only had those four guys and they had the adventure and the program and stuff like that. So the merchandise booth was pitiful. They had, um, I got everything in a swanky event bag, which I don't know how much this bag cost, but we, you can, you sold, we sold the bag. They sold us the bag. Here's your event t-shirt. I'm wearing one, but I've got another one. There's the event t-shirt. I can't see. And see, it's got the four people. Really? Hell in a cell, but look at even on even John Cena's are even on the top of the shirt. Cena Rio, Del Rio, Brian, and Orton. And then on the back of the shirt, this is why I wanted to get it, because in the back it has Hell in a Cell, the date, where it was. I look funny doing this, don't I? And it's got the the matches. It doesn't have all the matches that were on the card, but these were the matches that were announced. So, t-shirt. My wife got me a new CM Punk hat to go with my CM Punk t-shirt. Um, and my daughter wanted one of these. So, we got the the shirt, the pink Rise Above. Oops, that's not a good shot. Rise Above Cancer for, for Brian. The Brian Yes shirt. Uh, of course, my daughter marked out to Cena. She's like, ah, oh, Cena, I gotta get a Cena shirt. This is what Cena's there for. He's there for kids. And so she wanted this. She saw Cena live and she got, oh, oh I gotta get a Cena shirt. Right? Because that's what, that's what Cena's demographic is. Kids and middle-aged lonely women. So there it is. Got that one. My wife wanted this. So she got, they had this one, you know, the, the traditional Spec the beard with uh, the Dan O'Brien on the back and the yes. The, the, where is it? The, the yes on the thing. We got a uh, look at the hotel. Hotel gave me a free Miami Herald. Um, then we got. Um, oh, I don't have my poster. And then we got a. Uh, my wife got a yes towel. Look at woo, 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 woo. I don't have my, I don't have my program. I'll show you my program at the end of the video. I don't want to go get it now. I got a program and, and a belt. I bought a belt. So we hit the merch booths. We were disappointed in what was there, but we got what we got, what we wanted to get. I mean, I had to go online and get my daughter, get my daughter her her AJ shirt. It's fine. So we get in. And we're on, we're in section three, 310, row seven, and I thought we were going to have a hard time seeing, and we didn't. I mean, we could see well. Um, 
So you get in there, and you know the, the seats are like they're they're angled, pretty funny. And there were people that were there that were like, oh, I, I could hear them talking. They're like, I don't want to. Oh, this is kind of scary. It was kind of. I mean, if you're afraid of heights, it's kind of it's kind of rough because the way they angle the seats, you're kind of like looking down. You feel like you might like tumble if you stand up. You might tumble. But that's how arenas are. So uh, the ring was right in front of us. The, the cage was above and to to that side of us was the entrance. And, you know, we could see well, actually. I could see really well. I could see, you know, the wrestlers looked to be about like that big. But I could see them. They were they were bigger than I thought they were. I didn't need binoculars. So I was happy about that. I was afraid that I was going to be squinting a lot and I was going to have to look on the Titan Tron to watch it on the screens. But I didn't. Um... I know the 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 are the entrance is 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 wide um where the where the wrestlers come out that that ramp and the entrance is is very wide it's a lot wider than what you see on TV they didn't have a stage which kind of surprised me I think I might know why they didn't have a stage but my wife and I were talking about it later on I don't know what it looked like on television but live the the set almost looked cheap like they were missing things like there was no stage you know how there's a stage and a ramp that they walk down. They didn't have that. Um, and, you know they had the giant Titan Tron and the cage and the the barriers and whatnot. But I don't know. It felt like it was missing something. Maybe it was like a, I don't want to say like it was a cheap set, but like they they had it felt unfinished. I guess that's the word we're looking for. It felt unfinished. So um, contrary to what they may have told you on pay per view, I don't know if they said anything. The arena was not sold out. It was not. It was not packed. I could see plenty of empty seats, even as the when the event started and everybody who had filed in and was sitting down and whatnot. There were still a lot of empty seats, which kind of surprised me. Nineteen thousand people could fit in that arena. Nineteen thousand five hundred at the at the arena, and it wasn't sold out. I don't know if they told you on TV that it was sold out. If they did, they lied because it wasn't. Lots of empty seats, but that's okay. <clears throat> um. So, um, you know, it was a pretty good mix of people. There was kids, as I saw kids as little as like two years old, three years old. I saw adults as old as probably in their 70s and 80s. Uh, it was a good mix. Uh, nobody, there was, there was no belligerence. Nobody was vulgar. No fights. That's what I like about wrestling. I've never had a problem going to a wrestling event. There were no fights. People were chanting for opposing uh, wrestlers. Nobody got into a fight. Nobody threw beer at anybody. Nobody was swearing. Nobody got into a brawl in the parking lot after the event. It was just, we got there, we cheered for who we wanted to cheer for, we had a good time, and, you know, we, we left. Um, and that's what I like about going to wrestling. It's not like going to a Yankees game where some jackal is beating up a Red Sox fan, or you go to a, uh, you know, a hockey game in Philly or something like that, where someone's getting knifed or for, for wearing the wrong jersey. So, so it was a good mix of people. A uh, good, a good age range. It was good. We were sitting. Uh, I was sit the, the in front of us was two two separate fathers, not together. There was a father and his son, and then another father and his son. And the one kid that was sitting right in front of me, um, about halfway through, he started talking to me. He started turning around and started talking to me. And I started talking back to him. So for the whole event, we were started talking about the wrestlers and what they were doing. And he was like, "Oh, I hope Big Show doesn't show up." And so it, that was cool. I started talking to people sitting around me. That's always fun. So, yeah, so the event. So, um, so it went by really fast. For three and a half hours, boy, that night flew by. Probably because everybody was having fun. But the night starts out. Um, they, they introduced Rey Mysterio. That was the first thing they did. The first person who came out was Lillian Garcia. Lily and Garcia came out at the beginning. Welcomed everybody to WWE Hell in a Cell. Thought, thanked everybody for coming to, to Miami. Who said they were going to have a really good time. First person she introduced was Rey Mysterio. Told us that he was going to be the special uh, ring announcer for the Spanish announce table. I don't know if you saw that on TV or not. So Rey Mysterio made his entrance. He got a good cheer. Everybody cheered for Rey. And he went to the, to the table. They didn't sing the anthem. They didn't. They didn't do any national anthem or anything like that. Nobody sang. Sometimes Lillian sings the national anthem. Maybe they only do that at WrestleMania, but nobody sang the anthem. So then, the announcers came down. They didn't announce them. You just saw JBL. JBL came down alone. 
excuse me, and then Cole and Jerry Lawler came down alone, and you saw them walking down and taking their seats, but they didn't introduce them. Sometimes I think they introduced the uh, the announcers, but they didn't this time. I could see I could see where I was where I was. I could see JBL. He was animated through the whole night, but I could see him sitting down there talking. He's a big boy, a big guy, and he's down there. He's all animated, and I can see him. He's probably yelling at Michael Cole because we can't hear. You can't hear the announcers during the event. So uh, about 7.45, they announced the first match, Kofi Kingston versus um, Damian Sandow. Um, and so Kofi comes out, and, and, and Sandow comes out. Kofi came out to a big pop. Um, for most of the match, there was uh, there were uh, people chanting Sandow, but most everybody was chanting Kofi. It was a good match. It's quiet. We had speakers behind us, like right back there was a giant speaker, so we could hear like the thud of the mat and a lot of stuff. So that was cool. So that was a good ten minute match because they went from seven forty five to seven fifty five. Um, Sandow won, of course, um, but but Kofi got a good pop. And then, uh, so, then they went back down, and there was, you know, they, they weren't showing anything on the Titantron after the match. It was really just quiet. Uh, they were showing, like, just that they kept replaying that Hell in a Cell sort of graphic that they kept replaying. So then, at, a, at, at 8 o'clock, the event started. And sometimes people come out before the event, and they go, when we went to the Great American Bash, people, the, the announcer came out and went, he went, uh, we're going to be live here in the Great American Bash in like 10 seconds, and we want you to yell and cheer. And sometimes they hype the crowd up. They didn't do it this time. So the lights went down. The Titantron came on. We saw the FBI warning flashed on the Titantron, which I thought was funny. I don't know why I thought it was funny, but there's the FBI warning. And then it, shed, it showed the WWE then, now, forever bit that they always show. Then it showed another video, and then... All the pyro went off. And, you know, the pyro in front of the stage. I was really loud. All the pyro was loud. But it wasn't... I was afraid it was going to get smoky in there, like foggy. But it didn't. Whatever pyro they use, it doesn't generate a lot of smoke or fog. I brought my inhaler just in case. But I didn't need it. I, you couldn't smell anything. So that was nice. I was afraid I was going to get fogged out. But the pyro goes off. And then, you know, then we start the event. And uh, the first match, of course, was the triple threat match. Everybody went nuts for Goldust and, Co and Cody. Um, the crowd was really behind Goldust for a while. They were chanting. They, they chanted Goldust for most of the match. Um, and that was the only match of the night where people really cheered. Um, they chanted, you know, when, when Cody superplexed Rollins out of the ring. They chanted, this is awesome. They chanted, holy shit. The crowd was really behind that match. They loved it. Um, everybody was hooting and hollering. It was a great match. And when, and when Cody and Goldust won, the crowd goes ballistic. Um, so that was a good match. We didn't see, I don't know what you guys saw for like backstage bits. We didn't see a lot. We saw Vicky Guerrero talking to The Miz. And that was the only backstage bit. Well, no, that's not true. We saw Vicky Guerrero talking to The Miz. They showed that on the Titantron. And then we saw later on in the pay-per-view, Triple H talking to Shawn Michaels. But you couldn't hear him. You just saw them talking. And that's really the only backstage bits we saw on the Titantron. Um, and we did see the primetime players play in the video game with Bob Backlund. They showed that, too. So they don't show, like, really a lot of replays or stuff or a lot of backstage bits live. Those were really the only backstage bits they showed. So then The Miz comes out. That's the second bit of the night, right? The Miz comes out, gets on the microphone, calls out Bray Wyatt. Bray Wyatt gets on the Titantron, does his little promo. I got to tell you, Bray Wyatt's, the, the, his promos and his entrance live, it's creepy, man. The lights go down, and then that, that stupid little lamb face that eh, flashes up, and then he gives his promo in the dark, and there's like, like candles, what looks like candles around the arena. Really creepy. So he cuts his little promo, which actually, you know how they always end the promo with just the the, the lamb going bleep, and then it's it's over. Well, Bray Wyatt actually stayed on the Titantron for like four seconds. 
I don't know if that was a boo boo or what. But then, so then he lee. So then the promo's done. There's Hopper and Rowan, and they're beating the heck out of Miz, and the crowd starts chanting. I mean, I was chanting with them too. Crowd starts chanting, "We want Kane!" Like they knew, right? Like we all knew that Kane was there. We want Kane. So they're chanting for Kane. And all of a sudden, boom! His flames erupt. This cl this place goes bananas. It goes bananas. Kane comes down, kicks Rowan. Oh uh, no, who was out front? Harper. I don't know. One of the dudes. The dude that was outside the ring comes down, kicks him in the face, gets in the ring. He tries to slam the other guy, but um, I don't know. He they botched it. It was weird. They they botched it. He couldn't do it, so he threw him over the ring. And so the crowd is going nuts, and then the crowd starts chanting. I don't know if you heard this on TV, but the crowd starts chanting, "Choke slam, Miz! Choke slam, Miz!" And that's what he did. So he, boom, choke slams Miz, and then his pyro goes off in the ring posts. And as far up as I was, I could feel the the the, the heat from the flames. I could feel it where I was that far away. I was pretty impressed that I could feel. Kane's pyro. So he chokes slams Miz, and Miz is just like, oh, he's dead spidering it. My daughter started laughing. She's like, look, Miz looks like a dead spider. He's all like, ugh. He dead spiders in the ring. But what was really funny was, so Kane leaves, right? The lights go down, and then all of a sudden, like, Miz pops out of the ring. Like, he just pops up. He's like, oh, time to leave the ring. Like, nothing happened. Not He, he, didn't, he didn't get choke slam like two minutes ago. He pops up. He walks down the aisle, right? He walks down the aisle. He's, like, all stumbling. And then he walks into the Titantron. Like, he goes, boom! Walks into the Titantron. And then he goes, oh, oh, my God. And then he, like, turns around and walks out the entrance. And everybody's laughing at him. I don't think you guys saw that on TV. I think that was one of those bits they did just for the live audience. But it was funny. It's actually funny that Miz did that. I just, I'm like, oh, look, he's stumbling now. Boink! He, he, did, he pulls, like, a Three Stooges routine. He bumps into the Titantron. And he goes, and he goes, oh God, oh, and then he walks, walks around the entrance. So that was a funny bit. And then, um, I don't even remember some of these matches. What the heck was after the Miz? It was, um, was it Biggie and Ambrose? I think it was. I don't know. Anyway, so I don't. I may, I may give you these matches out of order because I don't really kind of remember the the order. So we got Big E and Ambrose. Um, the crowd had a good pop for that. They were really behind Big E. There was a lot of Big E chants. Big E, Big E. So um, people really were behind Big E. That was an okay match. I hate it when people get the count out. You know, I knew I, I told you I wasn't going to grade the pay per view. Right here, I am grading the pay per view. I don't like when people get the count out victory, but whatever. Um, and then he came back in. He gave. Ambrose the big ending and then he stood there. I know he got cut. I know Biggie got cut here and I know Ambrose got cut on the chin because they knocked heads. I didn't see that. But I remember going, I think that's blood on that mat because you couldn't really like after the Gold Dust match, there was there was Gold Dust makeup was on the mat. Like you could see the black and yellow smudges from his makeup. So after that match, they actually took the, the mat off. They rolled it off, they put a new mat on. They were doing that between matches. They were putting new mats on the ring. They had, like, multiple mats. They would peel one mat off the top, and underneath it was another mat. So they had that. Um, I don't... There was blood on that mat afterwards, but I didn't... I couldn't see the, the cut because I was too far away. So I didn't know that either one of them got cut until later on. I read it on the internet. I was like, oh, that's what happened. Boom, they knocked heads. I didn't see that. But, you know, Biggie stood over Ambrose for a good while. They, 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 they stand and do their entrances, you know, when they, they pose for the crowd for quite a while live. Probably for people to take photos or for the cameramen to take photos. So that was good. There was a big pop for that. And then um, you had Kali and Natalia versus Fandango and Summer Rae. Um, the crowd was still kind of Fandangoing. I did it because I'm a tool. So people were like, duh, duh. everybody was fond down and going, it was, it was all right. Um, he talked about, he gave us, a, he talked about being in Miami, doing a salsa dance. I don't know if you saw that on TV. Talked about how he was like the king of the salsa. I was really hoping I wasn't going to see that big oaf, Kali, but I got to see him. Horrible match. Um, it was really funny. I got to see Natalia spank Summer Rae on the ass. You could hear the slap from up where I was. She was like, 
I was like, oh, look, she got spanked. Huh. Um, I wasn't paying much attention to that match. And for really, for the most part, other than the people like Fondongoing for like two minutes or a minute at the beginning, most people just sat, at, sat there stone-faced. They were like, yeah, whatever, we don't care. Next match, there wasn't a lot of crowd reaction for that match. So then we had, um, what did we have? We had, uh, oh, God. So there was, that was Fandango, there was Ambrose, there was The Miz, there was that. So then we had, uh, I got to look on the shirt. You believe this? I'm trying to remember what we had. So we had, um, we had the, um, yeah, I talked about that. I talked about that. I talked about that. We had the um, the Punk versus Ryback match, and that was interesting. They, I thought they were gonna do both cage matches together, but they didn't. Punk versus Ryback match. So Ryback came down to a huge pop. I mean, punk, no Punk. Did I say Ryback? No, everybody hates Ryback. Punk came down to a huge pop. Everybody's cheering for Punk. Crowd goes nuts. So he comes down. Soon as Ryback hits the door. You know, as soon as his music hits, the Goldberg chants start. Goldberg. People are just booing this guy like crazy. So he comes down, and then, of course, Heyman comes down in that big ladder truck that he had. So he comes down in this ladder truck, which gets stuck on the ramp or on the on the aisle. And they have to, like, dismantle part of the hell in the cell to get him through. And it gets stuck on the way down. And then he cuts a promo as they raise him up to the top of the cage. So we had that match. That match was okay. Mostly, I can't say it was only okay, but mostly because Ryback is, is a goof. Um, you can really hear the, the, the cage, though. When people get slammed into the cage, you can hear the cage rattle. You can see it shake and all that. When people get slammed on top of it, you can hear it rattle. Um, my wife pointed this out. I didn't see it. But you can see hand holes when Punk was climbing. There, there are holes in the side of the cage. And they're probably they look like handholds, and that's that's what Punk was using to climb up the cage. They were probably smoothed out handholds on the side of the cage. I thought that was interesting. So then Punk gets up there, you know, you know the bit. He gets up there, Kane's Kane's Heyman on top of the cage. Crowd goes nuts for that. I mean, they they just cheered for every every time that the, the kendo stick hit. People were going yes, yes, yes. I mean, the yes chants were universal, not just for Daniel Bryan. So then, um, so then the match is over. So Punk climbs down and goes backstage. They have to get the genie truck. They have to get the ladder truck back out. Ladder truck comes back out. This took forever. They it went up. They they took Heyman off the cage, put him back on the truck, wheeled him back out, and you know the the cage goes back up. So that was that match. And then you had um, Los Matadores and the Real Americans. Um, I didn't think Los Matadores was as over with the crowd as they were, but maybe it was just because they were in Miami. I don't know. But the crowd really was, they were, they were chanting, they were, Ole! Everybody was chanting, Ole! And they loved the bull. The little kid that was in front of me, little, the boy that was in front of me, loved the bull. He was so happy. He was snapping photos of El Torito. Um, and this is really what this gimmick is designed for. It's designed for kids. So um, they came out to a really big pop. And then, of course, Coulter came out and and um, started doing his rant. And I knew he was going to do a pretty bad rant because he was in Miami. Started calling him border hopping banditos. Everybody's booing him, right? So then here's what I thought was funny. The section that I was in, it was a pretty good mix. I mean, there was a, a, a good racial mix, you know, in that in that um, area. A lot of African Americans, a lot of, um, you know, Mexican Americans, a lot of, Latino people, a lot of, you know, white people. It's a good mix, right? So we're, they're sitting there. He's, he's given his rant. Zeb Coulter is given his rant. And he goes, and, and he, at the end, you know, he does his bit about standing up, putting your hand over your heart, right? There's one dude in front of me, two aisles in front of me. This, this skinny-ass white cracker dude. He was, must have been about 19, 20 years old with, like, curly brown hair and, and these nerdy glasses. He stands up. The only one standing up in his whole section. Remember, the only one in his whole section. And he's got his camera like this. He's doing this. 
He's got his camera phone in front of him, and I can see he's recording. His camera phone's in front of him, like this, and he stands up and he goes, We the people! As loud as, as hell. And I'm like, all right, is he doing that because, you know, it's for show? Or is he like, does he really believe that? Like, this dude just, like, marked out the Zeb Coulter. And I'm like, all right, I don't, this guy's going to get his, he's going to get his head knocked in at the end of the show. I mean, it was as loud as all get out. It was louder than Coulter. And he's just like, he's like this old, we the people. Like, he's proud, you know? And he's looking, uh, you know, support guys? Anybody? 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 So everybody was like booing him. A couple, everybody's booing Coulter. That, that I thought that dude standing up was. I thought that was gutsy and probably stupid. But th that happened. I thought that was the funny bit of the night. Like that, that dude down there was was cheering for everybody that was cheering for the opposite of what everybody was cheering for. So you know, they the crowd got a big pop out of it. They got a big pop out of El Torito. Doing the shenanigans with Zeb Coulter. The crowd loved it. So that was a good match. I mean, as far as crowd participation goes. So then we had... Um, so we're getting down to the end of the card. Now we've got Cena versus Del Rio. So Del Rio comes out, and this place erupts with booze. They hated him. They're all... They're booing him. They're, they're cussing him. They're, they're... 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 It was horrible. Like, nobody liked... Nobody was... My wife was the only one in the aisle, in the section, clapping for Del Rio. Because my wife's a, a Del Rio fan. She really likes him. So she's like, yeah, see, see. And I'm like, nobody else is, I'm like, nobody else is clapping for, for Del Rio, which is fine. That's why you go to pay-per-views, right? To, to vote for who you – I just thought it was funny that the whole crowd was – there was like just little spots of people chanting for Del Rio. Not a lot of them. That's all right. So then they do the delay, right? And then Cena's music comes out. Cena's music hits, and the, the traditional, the traditional horns and everything, and and the crowd goes crazy. But the funny thing was is that the crowd goes nuts. They start cheering for Cena, yay! And then Cena comes out, and the crowd went dead, like just silent. It it was so odd that I started. I, I wish I had binoculars because for a minute I thought it wasn't Cena. I thought they had an imposter. I thought that they had done a swerve. And it wasn't really Cena there because the crowd cheered when his music hit. And as soon as he came out, silence. Like there was no, there was like tumbleweeds. And, and I'm like, maybe that's not Cena. Maybe they fooled us and that's really not him. It was him. So he hits the ring, you know, and he does his little bit. And almost immediately the chants start, let's go Cena. Cena sucks. Let's go, Cena. Cena sucks. Almost immediately, the, the, the chants start. There wasn't a lot of noise during that match. I mean, people weren't really cheering. They weren't really booing. It was kind of boring. The crowd appeared bored. Um, and so then, of course, Cena wins. Maybe the crowd thought, my wife said that, maybe the crowd thought that Cena was going to talk. Maybe they were, wait, maybe that's why the, the crowd died down. Because they thought he was going to grab the mic and say something. You know, hey, I'm back or whatever. But he didn't. I think maybe people were expecting him to talk. He didn't. So the crowd was very, like, apathetic in that match. They were all like, whatever. We don't care. So then you had um, uh, AJ versus um, the Brie Bella. Uh, that was the match right before the main event. So AJ comes out with Tamina. Yeah, pretty decent pop. She got more of a pop than the Bellas. She comes out, skipping, AJ does, and whatever. The Bellas come out, you know, immediately they're doing this. They, they started with that, and not a lot of the crowd was behind it. I'll, I agree when the WWE says, I don't know why people aren't behind Brie. They weren't. They really weren't. It's not that people were, like, booing or whatever. They were just like, whatever. So we get into the, they, they have their match. It was okay. You know, it was a decent match. People were chanting more for AJ than for Brie. AJ's more over with the crowd than Brie is. So AJ gets the win, you know, because her sister accidentally kicked Brie in the head or whatever the case was. There was, a, there was a scuffle. That was another match I didn't quite pay attention to. And then they leave. And then we got the main event. Here's the main event. 
And I'm out, right, in between those two matches. I'm like, I got to go get a soda and pee. So I'm out there, and I'm hoping beyond hope that they're, they're going to stall. And so I'm getting my, my, my drink. I'm going to the bathroom. I'm getting my drink, whatever. I'm out in the hallway, and I hear Shawn Michaels' music hit. I can hear the... <laughs> They think I'm cute. And I'm like, crap, I'm missing the match, right? So I, like, run into the thing. I ran back into the arena, ran up to my seat. And I see Michaels, you know, he's posing and the fireworks are going off. And he gets a good pop. Michaels comes down. And then um, Randy Orton comes down, does his thing. Crowd's booing him like crazy. Boo! They boo him like crazy. I'll get out. I felt bad for Randy Orton. I'll tell you why at the end. Booing him like crazy. And then Daniel Bryan, music hits. And the, the crowd goes ballistic. Yes! 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 This crowd goes nuts for Daniel Bryan. Everybody's chanting. And it's, it's the sea of fingers going up, right? Everybody's chanting yes. So then he comes down. And then Triple H's music hits. And then he comes down, you know, with the belt. Crowd's booing like crazy. They're booing Triple H. They're calling him asshole. Uh, it was the ass. It wasn't. It wasn't this time at the beginning. It was later when he came down in the middle of the match. They started chanting asshole. But he comes down, tries to shake Daniel Bryan's hand, and the, he tries to. He offers Daniel Bryan the hand, and the crowd starts going no, 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 and they're so loud, you know. So he doesn't shake his hand. Um, he shakes Michael's hand. He shakes Orton's hand. Whatever. Lower the cage, and then we start. And I gotta say. We've seen Daniel Bryan versus Randy Orton for the last two or th three or four pay-per-views in a row. This was their best match. Believe me when I tell you, this was their best match. And it was good live. It was really good live. Um, slam you could hear them slamming each other into the ring. You could hear the, you know, when Bryan kicked, drop kicked um, Randy Orton against the side of the cage. You could hear the crackle of the cage. When, when Orton threw Brian into the cage, when he went out to the outside, you could hear the crackle of the cage. It was really good bits. Um, every time Daniel Bryan hit Randy Orton with a, with a, with a, with a chair, the crowd chanted, yes. It was like, yes, yes. Um, then at one point in the match, Daniel Bryan just goes crazy, and he starts throwing chairs into the ring. Just this pile of chairs. He's just... I'm watching him going, what the hell is he doing? He's going around the whole ring. He's throwing chairs into the ring like he's nuts. The whole crowd starts chanting, EC Dub, EC Dub. The whole chant crowd breaks out into an EC Dub chant. I don't know if you heard that on TV, but it was awesome. They're all like, EC Dub. And there's this giant pile of chairs in the center of the ring. And so they all get back in the ring. And you see Randy Orton. I'm watching him. He's like... He's, like, putting all the chairs into, like, a pile. He's, like, picking chairs up and throwing them down and all that stuff. And I'm like, what is he got, OCD? He's, like, looking for the perfect chair. But you know what he's doing. He's building a pile because he's going to superplex Daniel Bryan onto the chairs. And that was a good bit. The crowd loved that bit. The crowd, even though it was against Bryan, you know, Bryan got hit with that, with that bit. The crowd loved it. They were like, oh, they cheered for that bit. They loved the high spots. So that was a good bit. When um, Triple H came back in, came back down, that's when the asshole chant started. So he's down there, Triple H is down there, takes his suit jacket off, he's yelling at Shawn Michaels. At one point, he's climb he climbed the cage, and he's like hanging off the side of it. And I'm like, what is he doing? He's like Tarzaning the cage. So then, um, so that happens, you know, then they, then, then Shawn Michaels takes the bump. He goes down. Triple H gets in the cage. And you know how the, the match ends. My, uh, Triple H throws Brian. Brian, high knees. You know, gives him the running knee strike to Triple H. Shawn Michaels super kicks Brian. We have a new winner, Randy Orton. I predicted that one, by the way, on my video. Predicted it. So then um, the crowd went they, they absolutely livid. They hated this, right? So then the cage goes up and Michaels leaves. Brian leaves, and now we have the celebration. Nobody cheered for Randy Orton. This is why I felt bad for Randy Orton, because he's going around the ring, and he's doing his little posing, and he's got the belt, and he did that for a good long time. He did that for like five minutes, maybe ten. I mean, he was out there for a long time, posing with the crowd, on the turnbuckle with the belt, and nothing. Nobody cheered. There were a few claps. I was clapping. 
There were a few claps, maybe a couple cheers, but it sucks because nobody cheered for him. Like, he just won the belt. Okay, I know you're not supposed to cheer for him. He's a heel. Nobody likes him. That's the storyline. But it's just, I felt bad because nobody cheered for him. Nobody, like, supported it. I mean, I don't know. I cheered for him. I saw a couple other people cheering for him. It just sucks when you're the heel and you win a belt because nobody cheers for you. Like, he does all the posing, and his music is just playing and playing and playing. Played for, like, five, ten minutes, and nobody cared. People left. They were walking out. As soon as as triple, as triple that as that referee counted one, two, three, and the bell rang, right when that bell rang and Randy won, people started filing out. You could just see him walking out of the arena. They're just leaving. And seats started emptying, and there was no pyro. Of course not. They don't do pyrotechnics for heels. But... I just felt bad. It's always, you know, whatever. When a, when a heel wins, nobody cares. I guess, I guess seeing that live, you know, really, it really showed me how bad it is if you're a heel to win the belt because nobody gives a crap. In the arena, no one cares. They leave. They get in their cars. They drive away. So overall, you know, those were the thing. Those were the bits. Um, like I said, the only bits that we saw. For backstage bits was the Vicky Guerrero and Miz bit, the times that Triple H was talking to Shawn Michaels, and the primetime player bit. And then at the end of the night, Justin Roberts comes out and says, thank you for coming. We appreciate you coming to Hell in a Cell. Hope we see you again. And then he, he plugs the next time they're going to be in Miami, January 31st, for a WWE live event. They're going to be in Miami. And he said, if you want tickets to it, they would sell tickets to the event, to that, to the January 31st event went on sale last night. Uh, our Sunday night for um, all the people that were there. It was advanced selling. So if you wanted to go see it, you could go downstairs to the ticket booth and get tickets. They plugged the next time they were going to be in Miami. And that was it. They raised the cage. The lights went up. Everybody went home. Um, and everybody, you know, getting out of the arena was fine. Um, the crowds were fine. Nobody, like I said before, no one was getting beat up. Crowds were good. Um, I know this video was a little long. Thank you for sticking with me. If you're here, still hearing me. Thanks for sticking with me. I know it was long, but there's a lot that I wanted to talk about uh, that I had seen. So, um, I was really disappointed in the merchandise. That's the big thing. Really disappointed in what they had at the merch booths. Um, didn't see anybody walking around. I didn't, didn't really expect to see any of like the wrestlers walking around. But, whatever. Sometimes they do. And that's always a bonus, I guess. Um, but the crowd overall... The crowd seemed pretty hyped for, for, you know, a good part of it. They did their chance, and they liked it. Um, it wasn't sold out, but it was pretty close. I mean, there was still, I could still see a, a bit of, bunch of empty rows, but um, it was okay. And uh, I, I'll go to, a, I'll, you know, I'll go to a pay-per-view again. My next pay-per-view I want to go to, WrestleMania. WrestleMania 30 in April. So, um... And maybe at the end of this video, what I'll do is I'll do, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll put some photos that we took, um, put some photos that we took at the arena. I didn't take any video. I think my wife might have taken some video, but I, I took some photos and whatnot. So I'll show you that at the end. But, uh, overall it was a good experience. Um, I, 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 I don't just, I don't regret going. I love going. It was good entertainment. You know, a lot of my picks won. A lot of my picks didn't win. Oh, I, I think I was, I think out of, I was four for, I was four for six. So I got, I was like, I'm still batting like 70%. I was still pretty right on most everything except for the stuff that they added on the fly. So, um, I don't know. Maybe that means the WWE is getting too predictable. Maybe they need to shake it up. So thank you for watching the journey for Hell in a Cell. And now it's over. Um, but it was good times. And, um. I'll do it again, and hopefully I'll be able to do this again for WrestleMania on the grandest stage of them all in New Orleans. That would be cool. All right. Frosty Knives, signing out. Wolfpack is back because I'm Master's Trust. Guess who's here? The bad boys are wrestling. Just
Constant competition, win the war, that's their mission. Not no mercy, see the rain start the street. If you don't know, you better find out the war pack. Here to prove a point, number one, just believe that you don't want to test it with them. I'll be here for them, come in the ring with them, you're never walking out again. Turn to your back on the war pack. Leave. You're the punishment for making enemies with these soldiers. So turn your back on the 